Kawakapo, with its soaring peak, is known as the god of the Meili Snow Mountains. Humans have made numerous attempts to scale it, but always in vain. Reaching the summit is often described as the conquest of a mountain. However, this concept contradicts a fundamental feature of the relationship between humans and nature. Harmony and coexistence. Since 1902, more than 20 attempts have been made to scale Kawakapo. None has succeeded. The last was made on January the 3rd, 1991, by a team of 17 Chinese and Japanese climbers. All lost their lives. In 2000, the local government introduced a law banning attempts to scale Kawakapo. No human foot would ever again violate this sacred mountain. Ancient Chinese philosophy contains the concept of unity of heaven and human. In essence, this means a form of harmony between human beings and nature based on coexistence, co-prosperity, and mutual reverence. The spectacular natural beauty of the Meili Snow Mountains is said to nourish the human spirit. Because of this, they have attained rich cultural significance. The beauty of mountains and rivers is not the exclusive privilege of human beings to enjoy. Birds are far better equipped to appreciate our blue planet. Since ancient times, flocks of birds on their annual migration have passed over Kawakapo. Yet, even older and higher than the birds, is the sun. It has witnessed far more of the Earth's history than any human or bird. Sixty-five million years ago, a great collision took place between the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates. The Eurasian plate was partly buckled. The Earth's surface, thus squeezed, threw up the Himalayas and the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. The huge force this generated had the effect of pushing the mountain ranges and valleys to the east sideways and compressing them. Where the provinces of Yunnan, Tibet and Sichuan meet, this produced a series of north-south mountain folds and fractures covering a vast area, which is now known as the Hangduan Mountains. The landscape of Yunnan has been described as a giant fold in time and space. From the northwest to the southeast, the terrain descends rapidly. Mountains rise and fall, and deep canyons intertwine like permanently frozen waves. Between the Himalayas and the Hangduan Mountains, Warm, humid air from the Bay of Bengal meets a cold, continental air current from the south. 
On the Meili snow mountains, the strong rising air becomes thick mist and heavy snow. This has created the rare phenomenon of low-latitude, high-altitude, temperate oceanic glaciers. This is the meeting point of three geographic regions, East Asia, South Asia, and the Tibetan Plateau. The biodiversity found amid this alpine landscape is among the richest anywhere on Earth. Amid the peaks and valleys of the Yunnan Plateau, the roaring waters and powerful air currents have nurtured numerous miracles of life. This is one of the places where humans originated. Here, everything is alive and vibrant and bursting with color. The grand and majestic mountains can appear like the planet's exoskeleton. But for millions of living things, they are home. When the weather begins to turn cold, the ghost moths burrow into the frozen ground and bury themselves, ready for winter. Inside the moth's bloated body, a parasitic caterpillar fungus lies dormant. When spring turns to summer, its spores shoot out from the sporangium. The tubes begin to move upward through the earth in search of rain and sunshine. In June, southwest China is a cauldron of heat. But in the Baima snow mountains, as if by magic, it's possible to see large flakes of snow falling. Within a single day, these mountains can witness all four seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter. A journey of three to four hours can take the traveler through a full range of climates, from the mountainous northern subtropics to warm, medium and cold temperate zones and even frigid zones. This transitional three-dimensional climate is accompanied by a changing vertical distribution of various flora and fauna. Within a horizontal distance of less than 40 kilometers, botanists have identified up to 16 bands of plant life, equivalent to the distribution covering thousands of kilometers in the whole of China, from north to south. The white-eared pheasant is the most widely distributed pheasant species in the world. Usually living at an altitude of four or five thousand meters, they migrate above the snow line in summer and move below it into the bush in winter. At times they may even descend as low as the spruce forest. This beautiful creature is popularly known as the snow chicken. Like other ethnic Tibetans, Arong and his wife believe it is a sacred bird, which, when it appears, brings good luck. They hope the snow chicken's footprints will lead them to caterpillar fungus. They left their home 30 days ago and have been staying on the Baima snow mountains ever since, 
looking for the valuable fungus. The Himalayan orogeny was the most important geological event during the Earth's Cenozoic era. Large numbers of angiosperms underwent a dramatic transformation, either by being lifted to higher altitude plateaus or by being plunged into lower altitude valleys. In the Hangduan Mountains in northwestern Yunnan, repeated geological and tectonic movements and the strong southwestern monsoon created a highly diverse living environment. Many new species evolved in a relatively short period of time. Yunnan's larch trees have enjoyed a magical existence. The enormous force generated by the Indian and Eurasian plates collision millions of years ago stirred and distorted the land. Numerous plant species thrived on the broken surface. Among them was the Kmelin larch, a tree normally only found in Arctic regions. There are 850 species of rhododendrons in the world. More than 270 of them are found in Yunnan. The giant tree rhododendron is the tallest and largest evergreen in the rhododendron family. It's found only in western Yunnan and northeastern Myanmar, where fewer than 3,000 are in existence today. Because it grows deep among remote mountains, the giant tree rhododendron was only discovered by biologists in recent years. From sapling to flowering, it takes nearly 50 years. This very long growth period makes each tree very precious. Developing from a tiny seed to a huge tree that lives for hundreds of years has made the giant tree rhododendron a legend of the mountains. The alpine dark coniferous trees grow at an altitude between 2,500 and 5,000 meters. These forests are the habitat of the Yunnan snub-nosed monkey. It's the dominant species in the Baimar Snow Mountains Nature Reserve one of 17 key biodiversity conservation areas in China. It's also one of the most biodiverse temperate zones anywhere in the world. The Yunnan snub-nosed monkey is a state-level protected species. It ranks alongside the giant panda as a national treasure. Among all the Earth's primates, the Yunnan snub-nosed monkey lives at the highest altitude. The Yunnan snub-nosed monkey inhabits over 6,000 square kilometers of virgin forest a vast area within which there is a huge 4,000 meter difference between the highest and lowest points. It's home to over 3,000 plant and 500 animal species, some of them rare and even endangered. As such, it's a world-class biological gene pool. Like every other area of China where primates live, 
it's an important water source. This means it's vital for maintaining the health of the ecosystem and guaranteeing the sustainable development of human economy and society. So, by protecting the Yunnan snub-nosed monkey, humans are protecting themselves. In the heart of the Biluo snow mountains, the various mushrooms are starting to emerge from their hibernation. Biluo is one of the main ranges in the Hungduan mountains. Its 15 peaks, rising above 4,000 meters, are bordered by the Lansang River in the east and the Nujiang River in the west. Opposite the Bilo Snow Mountains lie the Gaoli Gong Mountains. Between these two huge ranges flows the New Jiang River, which has carved out what is known as the Grand Canyon of the East. As a sort of suture, the river roughly covers the scars formed by the collision of the plates during the Himalayan orogeny. After millions of years, the land remains as rugged, savage, and primitive as ever. It also retains a certain spiritual and life-giving power. The rich and diverse vegetation provides the various wildlife with the means to survive and thrive. Hey. The Gaoli Gong Hulok Gibbon is the second newly discovered gibbon species to be named in the past century. These shy creatures form a community similar to that of humans. They're monogamous, remaining with a single mate for a lifetime. These gibbons live in groups of three or four in the pristine and dense forests of the Gaoli Gong Mountains. They rarely, if ever, leave the trees. They have an imperious call, which can be heard for many miles around. Agile and fast, they are the gymnasts of the forest. While other gibbons are capable of jumping distances of three to five meters between trees, the Gaoli Gong Hulok gibbon can manage ten meters or more.
The Wu Mong Mountains occupy a core area where cold and warm air currents meet and collide. The powerful weathering and other forces acting on the rocks and ridges produce debris, dust, and sand that are blown and scattered. The red color is produced by large deposits of aluminum, manganese, and especially iron oxide. Their accumulation over a long period has created the most famous laterite plateau in northeastern Yunnan. The Hengduan Mountains, as they extend from south to north, divert rivers and create wonders. Before eventually meeting the Ailao Mountains, the Ailao Mountains form the boundary between the two geomorphic regions of the Yunnan-Guizhou Plateau and the Hengduan Mountains. This vast range gets its name from the kingdom of Ailao, an ancient civilization that flourished in the area for many centuries. Geographically, the Ailao Mountains are an extension of the Yunling Mountains to the south, but culturally, they have their own unique features. The Hualo people, a branch of the Yi ethnic group, use a unique calendar that has been handed down to them from their ancestors. It consists of 18 months, each with its own name. Indicating an intimate understanding of changes in the weather: wind blowing month, bird singing month, fruit bearing month, leaves falling month. The Hualo's affinity with nature is also reflected in a popular legend, which tells of how their ancestors were taught to farm by a swarm of bees. The Himalayan honeybee is found mainly in central and eastern parts of the Himalayas. They build their hives under overhanging cliffs and on protruding rocks, which offer them protection. Within a radius of three kilometers, there will be a rich source of honey. Busy. Hardworking and tireless, the bees are constantly flying back and forth within this relatively vast area, committed to reaping the richest possible harvest. Here in the mountains, obedience to nature is accepted as a law of survival. This is true for all the living beings. None more so than the humans. For the slash and burn farmers, missing the season means committing a potentially fatal error. This diverse land has nurtured many different human civilizations down through the ages. Even though they have used different languages, they have told the same ancient legend. The people nurtured by the great mountains are sensitive to the fact that humans and nature depend on each other. Reproduction and growth are as vital for humans to survive as they are for their grain and cattle to thrive. The love between male and female 
is a principle of nature, but also a mystery of life. After a solemn ceremony, men and women in costume dance and sing in the mountains and forests, celebrating their closeness to nature. And so, on this fertile land, life goes on from one generation to the next. Mountains offer the lives that flourish among them shelter. They also afford them a feeling of closeness to heaven. Here, the cycle of life, as it continues, assumes a sense of greater spirituality. And this is what makes mountains a sanctuary where the community of life is celebrated. Show me. 